This is a whole beef brisket, uh, commonly referred to as a pecker brisket. It consists of two muscles. Uh, this area here that's thinner is known as the flat, whereas this part here that's bigger is known as the point. Let me turn it over so you can see. This one is a uh, Angus choice grade beef brisket. And you can see the lines of the fat going across here. That's known as the grain. And later when we slice it, or rather when I slice it, <laughs> you're right here. Uh, when I slice it, I'm gonna slice it across the grain like this, that way uh, see, these are real long muscle fibers. That when you cut it across, that makes those muscle fibers really, really short. So it helps make them more tender and easier to chew. Uh, and as you can see, the, the grain kind of changes from this direction to a little bit more across this direction. So when you cut it later on, you need to be aware of that and make sure you adjust to get those uh, muscle fibers as short as possible to make it more tender. When selecting a brisket, Try to get one as thick as possible here at the tail end of the, the flat. If this was, I've seen some that are just almost paper thin. Uh, this very tip isn't that big of a deal. If, if that gets too dry out, that's not a big, that's not any big problem. But if this whole area here is super thin, the chances are it's going to come out really dry and you won't like it very much. So try to get this fine one with the uh, nice grain of the fat running through there and one that has the, the, the meat portion, not, don't worry about the fat, the meat portion is as thick as possible here. And again at, at the, this end, the point, pretty much ignore it. Just pretend it's not there. Uh, this is going to always turn out tender. Uh, the, the trick is making the, the, uh, the flat portion tender. Anybody can cook a point until very tender. You can cook a tender point if you're blindfolded, riding a unicycle, and juggling two crocodiles and a hippopotamus. It's easy to do. The hard part, like I say, is getting the, uh, the flat portion tender. So I'm going to trim uh, a good bit of fat off this and anything else I don't want on there. Don't cut all the fat off. Uh, like this, this portion here, see how, how hard that is? That is not good stuff. So I'm just going to cut it little by little. It's a little awkward because I'm cutting it from the back side so you can see what's going on. But it makes it hard for me to see what's going on. By the way, I'm using a boning knife. As you may have noticed, the blade is very flexible. So when you when you are cutting this fat, you can see I can maneuver the blade in there to just work on getting the fat cut out and uh, not cut into the meat itself very much. I'll get the worst of that pulled out of there. And that's going to be pretty good that way. Uh, uh, by the way, this is uh, just over 12 pounds in weight. It's uh, bordering on the small side of a brisket. It's a, it's a medium to small size brisket. I guess a medium brisket. <laughs> medium sized brisket. this chunk of fat here off the point. But 
but just to work on it little by little, removing, primarily removing any large areas of fat, especially if they're hard. Like this here, this fat is, see how soft that is? That's not, uh, it's not too bad right there. This here is a little bit harder, so I'm going to remove some of that and uh, get as much of that off as you can. You can see here, again, this is the flat portion, or it's called the flat muscle, and up here is the point. And uh, you can see that there's the meat here on the top, and here's a huge section of fat right here. Uh, most of the time, this chunk of fat in here is extremely hard. And this one is actually quite soft, so this might be a really, really extra wonderful brisket. So, I usually will take a little swipe of that out of there, but that's pretty soft. I'm going to leave that. And then here, on this edge of the flat, see how, how flexible this is? This is at room temperature. It's been out for... Oh, a good hour, a little over an hour. See how flexible that is? That's a really good indication that it's going to be tender. Sometimes you get some that are just really, really stiff and difficult to, uh, to bend at all, even when they're at room temperature. This one is looking mighty good. I've got the worst of the fat trimmed off. And that's all I'm going to do as far as trimming it up. My oven, the oven is uh, up to temperature right now. It's at 275 degrees Fahrenheit. And I'm going to cook this. Uh, I'm going to season it up and then cook it in there uh, for approximately two hours just to start with. And then I'll bring it out let you see it real quick and what I'm going to do with it at that point. This is the roasting pan I'm going to use. And uh, by the way, this this is going to shrink. Once be, by the time it's done, it will have shrunk. Uh, it will lose about one third of its size. So it's going to be instead of filling the pan up, it's going to be about this big here. That's normal. It's normal for my old favorite here. Any of you up in Canada? that are going to say, oh, we have the better stuff. Well, <laughs> I know you do. This is what we have here in the USA. If you live in Canada or across the ocean, you got the better stuff. But this is what we got, and it's, it's pretty good too. So I'm going to use that. And some uh, a good basic seasoning here. What I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to put this in with the bottom side uh, facing up in the oven and I'm going to turn the broiler on for about uh, five, six hundred degrees perhaps and I'm just going to do this for just a, just a few minutes, not very long at all, just to want to, I want to get a little bit of sear on this. Then I'll bring it out and flip it over and put this side down. I just want to put a sear on it is all. It's been in there just about five minutes or so. And you can see it's caramelizing very well on the surface there. That's what I'm looking for.
And now comes the tricky part. I gotta turn it over and try not to make a huge mess in the process. Side. Also going to add some pepper. You go through pepper pretty quick that way. <laughs> now, don't forget this area, this whole top area here is a flat. Underneath down here at this highest end is the point and we don't care about the point. It's going to be fine all by itself We're not going to pay any attention to it So I'm going to put this temperature probe into the flat area and This is where uh, People tend to get into problems when cooking a brisket the are so used to cooking to temperature, to a specific temperature, for it to be done. And that's not how you cook a brisket. <laughs> you cook a brisket to tenderness. And that means the final temperature could be anywhere from perhaps as, as low as uh, maybe 170, or it can go up to 210, even 220 degrees sometimes before it's tender. Uh, so cooking to temperature is just if you've been doing it and you've had good luck, then then you've just had good luck. Uh, it's it, it it depends on how thick the meat is, the temperature of your oven, how much fat there is, uh, how old the brisket is. Is it from a, a younger animal or an older animal? Uh, there's a lot of variables involved, and that's why it can be difficult to cook it to a specific temperature for it to be done properly. So the temperature probe is just going to be a road map. It's going to show us as we're getting closer to our destination. And the final destination, like I say, will be, is it probe tender? I'll use a toothpick or a metal, pro, uh, metal, metal probe or a bamboo skewer into the uh, flat area here. And if it goes in very easily, then that's tender. So, I'm going to put this back in the oven now at 275 degrees. I turned the, the broiler back off. It's back to 275. And this is going to go for, uh, for a good while, probably at least three to five hours. Uh, at the two-hour mark, I'm going to take a look at it. If this is getting too dark, I'll cover the pan with foil. Uh, but we'll see at that point. It just, it just depends. It just depends. So... Back into the oven now. It's been uh, really close to five hours. And it's at... It's at 194 degrees. A little bit of resistance, not much. I think it's done. It should be. So I'm going to let it rest now. Until it hits, uh, let, the, let the temperature drop. Until it gets to be around 150, and then I'll go ahead and slice it. I'll try to slice it right now. All the juices are just going to run out like crazy. So you let it relax and uh, just uh, chill out. So what I'm what I'm going to do is just put a couple sheets of parchment paper for the top. There. That'll keep most of the moisture in 
and but it won't steam it so badly. You'll let, it, let it breathe just. Okay, it is now down to about 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It's still pretty warm, but it's time to slice it. Check for the uh, grain here. that. You can see I sliced it fairly thick. And it's just really, really tender there. Yeah, it's just pulled them right apart. See that juice come out of it there? See, this is the flat meat down here, starting to get into the point meat up the top. And that point meat is just super, super tender. If you can get the flat meat to be tender like that, the point will always be even more super tender. There we go. Beef brisket sliced. It's just a really tasty, tasty uh, thing. Uh, give it a try. It's good for holidays or anytime you want something really tasty to eat. I'll see you next time on Cook and Gobble Videos.